Okay, in this video, um, I'm going to open up my Outliner, Windows. Uh, so now if I go, and so now if I hold down Shift, whenever I've got a, like a box with a plus on it, I can hold down Shift, and that's going to expand the whole hierarchy. And, um, oh, okay, so when I, somehow I duplicated these joint chains, like, Very strange. I thought I'd rename these. Okay, well, um, I'm going to delete the left one, or the right one rather, and go back in and rename the left one. So left. Oh, I didn't name them in the first place. Sorry, it's early. Left collar. And I'll pause the video while I do that. Okay, so same naming convention. Uh, I can grab the top of that chain and let's go back to mirror. Uh, mirror, and that's going to mirror it over. And then I've got the uh, expand that. And I've got the right names over here. Okay, so um, that's all good. Now, what I want to do is check my joint orientation. Okay. Um, so again, uh, you know, this week we're talking about hierarchies. Uh, skeletons are a big part of hierarchies. And so um, this is something else we need to do to align our joints. And I spoke about that briefly in class. So um, I'm going to hide the geometry briefly. Now with the skeleton, um, uh, there's a couple of things I need to do. So I'm going to go under skeleton and well first I'm going to select the hips and I'm going to select the hierarchy which selects the whole thing and because I moved things around a little bit what I want to do is freeze the transformations okay now some of these joints are going to have rotations on them um, and I need to fix those now at the top of a hierarchy um, you're going to have three values because this is a this is a branch, okay? So you can think of this as like a tree, and you can think of the limbs as branches or limbs on a tree. Now these limbs will have um, more than one value, but once I align um, everything, then we're only going to wind up with one value, and that's going to be x. So what we want to do. We zoom in here, we can see the X for this joint is coming out this way. What we want to do is align these joints so the X goes straight down um, and points to its child. Okay, and, and the reason that we, we add this, this last joint that's like a garbage joint is um, we also want to align this one so it's going down that way. And you'll see once I align them that the end, the very end joint doesn't align down to its its child. So that's why adding an additional um, will make this one line down and later I'll just delete that. Okay, so, so again, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, so I want to select the hierarchy. Um, I'm going to freeze the transforms. Okay. So now if I go back and I look at uh, this one, so I've got these three values. Now if I look at this one, um, uh, I don't have any rotations. Um, I don't really have any rotations on anything. That's why your freezer transforms at this very first move with joints. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is go into the second step for aligning joints is skeleton, and I'm going to go to the orient joint command and use the option box. And I'm going to middle mouse drag it and put it over here. So let's click on that. So the primary axis is going to be X. 
Um, we're going to line the X of each of these down towards its child. Um, orient the children. Okay, so let's click on Apply. Okay, and so now we can see that if we look at the lo local rotation axes, the X here, it's going, it's pointing down to its uh, child. And that's how we make sure that um, joint hierarchies are aligned. Okay, and um, again, at the beginning of a branch, we have three, up to three translation variable uh, values. Um, now all of its children should only have an X value. So this joint is just moved forward an X. It's just a length and it's the only value that this joint has in relation to that. Same thing all the way down the chain. Now that we've done that, I can delete my end joints. Garbage points, joints that I put in. Now everything's aligned. Good time to save. This is uh, two. Okay, and now I've got one last thing to do. And so that is I've got to make sure that the local rotation axes are um, aligned. And that's kind of a two-step thing, and it's a little tricky. So again, I'm going to select the hips and select the hierarchy. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go under display. Um, and I'm going to go to um, transform display. And I'm going to click on local rotation axes. So this is something I'm going to want on my shelf. So control shift click. Okay, now local rotation axes is a this here. local rotation axes that is a toggle. So when I click it, these axes come off and on. Okay, so I want them on. Now, what I need to know about your local rotation axes. They all need to be facing the same way. So for example, in the knees, they are not facing the same way as they are in the hips and the ankle and the ball. Um, and so what I want to do is just turn this around so that it's facing the right way. And, 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 a, and a reason for that would be, so if I were to grab, say, this joint, shift select that joint, and shift select this joint, shift select this joint, and if I were to click on E for rotate, you can see that um, the, all the joints, um, or, or that the knee, let me get a better view of this. So the knee is bending backwards, where everything else is bending forwards. If I go the other way, Um, so, so you want all the joints to kind of go the same way. And this would be especially important if you had to see like a tail or something. So I'm going to hit Z, Z again. Again, that's just a uh, one of Brian's rules for rigging. Test something out and then make sure you put it back, uh, hit undo, put it back where it belongs. So we need to change this orientation here. In order to change this orientation, we need to go up to our status line, okay? And we also need to get into component mode. So right now we're in object mode. To get into component mode, you can right click, select the joint, right click and, or, or it's gonna be F8, let's just do that. So, um, I'm going to click on F8, 
and so that puts me in component mode. Um, you can also use these two buttons up here. So this is object mode, and this is component mode. We have to be in component mode to change this, this joint. Okay, so when we are in component mode, you'll notice that these icons here change. And what these are, um, these are this is a selection mask. So um, locators, joints, curves, geometry, and other goop. So in component mode, we want to go over here to the question mark, and we want to right click it, and we want to make sure local rotation axes is clicked. Okay, so local rotation axes is clicked here. With local rotation axes clicked, what I can do is, and you have to, and you have to click right on it. Now I uh, and and I make sure that I grab the uh, the the red or the X channel, nothing else. And what I'm going to do is just rotate this around. Okay. Now uh, this doesn't have to be exact, um, although you can make it exact. But what you, what you want it to do is you want this rotation angle to be aligned with uh, the plane that it's going to rotate on. Okay, so then I'll click on this one. So now I need to go back to object mode. Let's select that one and then go to component mode or F8. Here I'm going to hide the geometry and I'm going to go back. Select my hierarchy. I'm going to put the local rotations on. Now, um, as we saw before, we go to component mode and select a joint. And if we right click on the question mark and put on local rotation axes, I'm going to go hit E and go to my rotate tool. Uh, now there's something pretty important uh, that I want to show about. Uh, I want to get into the script editor so I can access that with this white button in the corner or I can go to Windows, General Editors, Script Editor. And we're going to use the script editor, using the script editor quite a bit in this class. I want to show you shortcuts that you can make. So I'm going to start right here with um, clicking the plus key and I'm going to make a new um, MEL window. So I've got MEL which is my embedded language and Python. Uh, the script editor, this is the input window and this is the history window. Uh, as we do things, uh, things will be echoed to us in the history. Okay, and so what I can do here is uh, Erase the contents of the history window, or the input, or both. I can show just the history, just the input, or both. Uh, so this is the mode that I'm usually in. I can just take this window and maybe make it a little bigger, and then just put this one here for now. I'll show you more about layouts later. Okay, so in a lot of cases, uh, you'll see that we just need to change the orientation so that the Z's facing, they're all facing the same direction. In a lot of cases, you'll see that they just need to be rotated 180 degrees. Uh, again, you want to rotate on the X. So let's just do that really quick. All right. So here in the script editor and the history. This just, uh, Maya just told us what the command is for rotating um, a local rotation axis in component mode on a join. So this is the command. Okay, so I'm going to middle mouse drag that down to my input here. And if I hold control 
in the middle mouse button, I can make my text a little bigger. So uh, that was 126 degrees. What I can do is just come in here and change this value to 180. Um, either negative or positive 180. Let's just go 180. Um, now if I select this, so if it's blue down here, this means that it is a Maya command and what these are are flags. Okay? And um, this stands for X, Y, and Z. When you've got three uh, values, that's generally what that's for. You always have a semicolon after a mel. Um, line. Now if I um, highlight the rotate command, right click, and I can drag down with my marking menu to quick help, and then the quick help is going to show up here to the side. I can also go to um, show quick help like that, here under command. And we're going to get into these commands a, a lot more extensively. But what we can see here are these flags that are followed by um, or preceded by a dash. So the R and OS and the FO, these are the short names. Uh, so for instance, the uh, R stands for relative. Um, and so it's the short name, and then to the side is the long name. So we could type relative out or just do dash R. Okay. And so what I just wanted to switch this for 180 degrees because very often you just need to reverse them. So let me hit undo, put that where it was. So now what I can do is grab this entire line of code, middle mouse drag it up here, release. And now I've got um, a little mill script here, which will, if I grab that and click on the button, it's just going to rotate it 180 degrees for me. So that's a shortcut in aligning your joints. Um, and that's typically the value that you'll use. So I'm going to right click, say edit. Now this is the command that I had put in. If I come over here to shelves, you can see that these are all of the tools that I have in here. Um, and there's a tool tip if I hover over it, and then I can give it an icon label. So I'm just going to um, type in 180. And then if I just click on Save All Shelves, you see that the 180 appears there. Save my shelves. And so um, I can have that command there for convenience. Okay, so now I'll just click on um, go back here to the outliner. I'm going to select the hips and local rotation axes. And I have to select the hierarchy there. And Turn the local rotation axes off, display off for all those. Then if I turn back on the geometry, uh, what the back face culling will do is this one over here. Here it'll show the, the back faces. Um, or you can put it so that you're only seeing uh, just the front facing faces or the faces that are uh, facing the camera.